In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Well, welcome everyone to our celebration of Mass for this Feast of the Baptism of the Lord, the final day of the season of Christmas. Last Sunday we celebrated the Epiphany, the making known of Jesus as an infant. But the whole week since has been a series of Gospels of small epiphanies, small revelations of who Jesus is in the course of his ministry. Today is the last and the greatest of those other epiphanies as Jesus is revealed as beloved son. And so a day of joy for us in this challenging time of COVID to remember that we are beloved sons and daughters of God through our own baptism. And so in that joy, in that hope that Christmas plants in our hearts, we begin our celebration. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. You are the Word made flesh and the splendour of the Father. Christ, have mercy. You are a light shining in our darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. And on this Christmas feast of the Lord's baptism, we sing our praise of God. Grace of this Christmas season. Almighty, ever-living God, 
who when Christ had been baptized in the river Jordan, and as the Holy Spirit descended upon him, solemnly declared him your beloved son, grant that your children by adoption, reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, may always be well-pleasing to you. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom my soul delights. I have endowed him with my spirit that he may bring true justice to the nation. He does not cry out or shout aloud or make his voice heard in the streets. He does not break the crushed reed nor quench the wavering flame. Faithfully, he brings true justice. He will neither waver nor be crushed until true justice is established on earth for the islands are awaiting his law. I, the Lord, have called you to, the, to serve the cause of right. I have taken you by the hand and formed you. I have appointed you as covenant of the people and light of the nations, to open the blind, eyes of the blind, to free captives from prison, and those who live in darkness from the dungeon. The word of the Lord. Truly, God is my salvation. I trust, I shall not fear. For the Lord is my strength, my song. The Lord became my Savior. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Give thanks to the Lord. Give praise to God's name. Make God's mighty deeds know, known to the peoples. Declare the greatness of God's name. Sing a psalm to the Lord, for the Lord has done glorious deeds. Make them known to all the earth. People of Zion, sing and shout for joy. For great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed Cornelius and his household. The truth I have now come to realize, he said, is that God does not have favorites, but that anybody of any nationality who fears God and does what is right is acceptable to him. It is true, God sent his word to the people of Israel, and it was to them that the good news of peace was brought by Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ is Lord of all men. You must have heard about the recent happenings in Judea, about Jesus of Nazareth and how he began in Galilee after John had been preaching baptism. God had anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power, and because God was with him, Jesus went about doing good and curing all who had fallen into the power of the devil. The Word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. In the course of his preaching, John the Baptist said, Someone is following me, someone who is more powerful than I am, and I am not fit to kneel down and undo the strap of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. It was at this time that Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. No sooner had he come up out of the water than he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit like a dove descending on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. My favour rests on you. The Gospel of the Lord. Mm. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Each year as we move from the Christmas season and prepare to enter the ordinary time of our year, we celebrate this feast of the Lord's baptism, the event which took him into his public ministry. And naturally enough, it's a day which asks us, as we move into a new year, what it means for us to be a baptised people. But I think there are three obstacles to us fully appreciating our own baptism. And it's those obstacles I'd like to reflect on briefly today. The first is that we tend to consider our baptism uh, as simply a past reality, something that happened to us many years ago, in most cases when we were too young to even appreciate what was happening. And that can hold us back from seeing baptism as something which defines our very being now. The baptism isn't simply about some thing that happened to me, but even more, it's about the person I became. So that's the first thing. We need to bring our baptism into the present. Not just I was baptised, but rather I am a baptised person. But having been brought into the present, the next obstacle is that we can miss the, the full meaning of baptism uh, as for any sacrament by focusing too much on, on what it means that I have to do rather than on what God is doing in me. I think a, a very good example of that was the ludicrous definition of confirmation which dominated much of the 20th century the definition of confirmation as the sacrament of adult commitment. It's a definition, I, I dare say, that teeters on the brink of heresy. It certainly makes it harder for us to understand uh, how and why we now confirm children at a much younger age. We can't define a sacrament by what we do. Sacraments are above all gracious acts of God. The essence of a sacrament lies in what God does in us as the mystery of God's presence comes into our lives. Now certainly that demands a response from us, but the response is of what lies at the heart of the sacrament. It's God's love which lies there. And that brings me to the third and final thing that we often forget. And that's that sacraments are, in fact, acts of God's grace. And grace, from the Latin gratia, is a word which literally means free gift. We so often act as though we have to earn God's love, earn God's presence, slave away, perhaps with little hope, to make God even bother to condescend to look our way. Whereas, our, in fact, our faith says to us that God is nothing other than love, unconditional love, and that God is always standing there next to us, 
within us, wanting to embrace us. And what the sacraments are about is God trying to tap us on the shoulder and say, open your eyes, I'm already here. And so to be a baptised person hopefully means that we are a person who has had their eyes and their ears, their mind and their heart opened to recognise what's all around them. God. There's a beautiful prayer in the Orthodox Church's Liturgy of Baptism that I always like to use myself when celebrating baptism. I think I've quoted it here before. It really says it all. Become what you already are. Find the one who is already yours. Listen to the one who never ceases speaking to you. Own God who already owns you. Become what you already are. What you already are, child of God, indwelt by God, not having to earn God. A prayer which expresses that we don't have to do anything or earn anything, that all we have to do is open our eyes. It's about grace, free gift. So to be a baptised person is to be an aware person. In the first place, it's not about what we do, but about who we are. Though certainly the doing will flow out of that. It's about being someone who sees the world, sees life in a different way, because we see God everywhere, in everything, in everyone, in ourselves. Even when it's not perfect, even when we're not perfect even when we sin. Become what you already are. And what we are is a people baptised into God's love. So become it. See it. Live it. Generously, not half-heartedly. Be different. Be full of God, which simply means to be full of love. Be generous with love. Make it the most important thing. Certainly more important than things. This feast of the Lord's baptism sends us out into the year and it does it by reminding us of the present. That we are a baptised people called to become what we already are. Called simply to be aware of God. Aware of God all around us aware of God all through us. If we can simply achieve and refine and deepen that awareness, all the rest will follow. Because if we were truly to see God in all things, then there would be no doubt that we would love God in all things. And so let's profess our faith now in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried, he descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. So on this feast of the Lord's baptism, we place our prayers before our loving God. For Pope Francis, Bishop Anthony, and all who lead God's people, that they may challenge and inspire us to take up a baptismal calling with courage and enthusiasm. Lord, hear us. In his baptism, Jesus is proclaimed as God's beloved. May this celebration remind us that we too are God's beloved, chosen and cherished by the Father's love. Lord, hear us. As our world continues to face the pandemic, we pray for those who are sick. We pray for those who care for them, and we pray for those who have died. Lord, hear us. We pray for our fellow local Christian churches. This week, we pray especially for Reverend Stephen Layson and the congregation at St. Peter's Anglican Church at East Linfield. Lord, hear us. God of the Covenant, we rejoice in the baptism of Jesus our Lord. Make us eager to live in him who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. Pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the offerings we have brought to honour the revealing of your beloved Son, so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of him who willed in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world, for he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the waters of the Jordan you revealed with signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came from heaven we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us, and by the spirits descending in the likeness of a dove we might know that Christ your servant 
has been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring the good news to the poor. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. by sending your spirit upon them like the dew, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and willingly into his passion took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take all of you and eat of it for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was done, he took the cup. And once more giving thanks, he gave it his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith resurrection we offer you Lord the bread of life and the cup of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit remember Lord your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of love together with Francis our Pope and Anthony, our bishop, and all the clergy, and all your people. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and with all the saints who have loved you throughout the ages, we too may be counted worthy to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, 
forever and ever. Gathered as a people baptised into the Lord, we pray as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And we pray for God's peace, especially for those of you who are uh, sharing in this Mass at home and who are unable to come to the church at this point. We pray that this season of Christmas has brought the Lord's peace and, and strength to your hearts. And if you are with others uh, uh, taking part in this Eucharist, let's now share with one another a sign of God's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him into whom we are baptised. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, O Lord, so that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children 
in name and in truth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As we conclude this Christmas season, go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks, everyone. Thank uh you. -huh.